Hey everyone, Chris here with some exciting news to share. I have finally gotten my hands on these new Excel functions that Microsoft rolled out last month, group by and pivot by. Now I've been playing with these functions all morning. I'm super impressed. So I wanted to take a minute and give you a first look to break down exactly how these functions work. So to demonstrate, I've got a simple sample data set here with coffee shop sales. We've got quantity sold and revenue broken down by shop location and product category. And typically when you're dealing with exploratory analysis for a data set like this, you'll use tools like pivot tables or maybe conditional aggregation functions like countifs or sumifs. Now those functions are great. I use them all the time, but they tend to be a little inflexible for more complex use cases. And that is where group by and pivot by really shine. So let me show you an example here, starting with group by. First thing we need to select is the row field. This is how we want to aggregate or roll up our data. In this case, let's say we want to show data at the location level. So I'll select the values in column A, the values that I want to aggregate. Let's say we want to show total revenue by location. We can select our revenue numbers here in column D. And this is the beauty of the group by function. You've got this function argument that has all of our different aggregation modes nested inside of it. So you've got sum, average, median, count, max, min, plus some brand new ones like percent of, which is super powerful as well. So let's start simple with a sum. We'll show the total revenue by location, close the parenthesis, press enter, and boom, because it's a dynamic array formula, we get our results in a spill range after writing just one single formula. So this is a very, very efficient approach. Now, what I love about these functions is that you can change the aggregation mode very, very easily. And you also have these amazing optional arguments here as well. You can tell Excel how to handle your field headers. You can change the depth, whether or not to show or hide totals and subtotals. In this case, let's get rid of that total row with a zero, like so. You also have sort options, which allow you to sort the data by any column in the spill range by referencing its index value. So if we wanted to sort by the second column in our spill range, that will sort by total revenue ascending. And if we wanted that descending with the highest at the top, all we need to do is change that two to a negative two. And there you have it. Last option here is the filter option. So suppose we didn't want to show total revenue by location as a whole. We only wanted to show total revenue by location for product sales that don't include coffee. Then we could select column B here in our filter array and add criteria like not equal to coffee. And boom, it's updated. So obviously, as you can see, just so much more flexibility here than using those traditional sum ifs or count ifs or average ifs functions. Even so, we're still just scratching the surface, right? We've got a single row field selected. We've got a single value field selected. But what happens if we select multiple row fields? like columns A through B. Now we get all of our locations and categories represented here in our spill range. And we can do the same thing with our values. So instead of just revenue in column D, we can pull in those quantities from column C as well. So just such an intuitive and versatile function. And the beauty of this is that the pivot by function works exactly the same way except we get some additional arguments to specify column breakdowns as well. So let's start the same way. Let's group our data by location on rows. But now for each location, let's break down some values by different product categories on columns. So I'll add column B as our column field argument. And the values that I want to show, uh, this time let's use quantities from column C. Just like group by, we've got a function argument as well. Why don't we do the sum of quantity sold and let's see what that looks like. Boom. So right away we get this pivot style view that we produced with one single flexible function. Now, of course, we could dig into all of these optional arguments as well. We could turn off the totals for rows, for instance, and the totals for columns. We could select different sort orders for rows and for columns, but just so much that you can do here and so much functionality packed into two relatively simple functions. So there you have it, that's my first look. And just to summarize some of the biggest benefits that I'm seeing with these functions, number one, the fact that you have access to 
all of these aggregation modes within one single function, plus the ability to customize with Lambda. Number two, the fact that these are now dynamic array functions. So you're writing just one formula instead of multiple. And then last but not least, the flexibility that you get with all of these extra formula arguments and parameters to customize things like headers, totals, sort orders, and filters, just make these incredibly flexible. So hopefully you found that helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop me a comment.